Americans love to say, we are number one. In many categories, this statement may well, may well be true. The United States is one of the wealthiest countries in the world, and we can match or surpass any other country in areas of science, finance, academics, athletics, and more. But is it true when it comes to health care? Some may say that America has the best educated doctors, the best equipped hospitals, and the most advanced medical care in the world, which again may be true. However, according to the World Health Organization, in a study comparing the quality and fairness of health care systems in 191 countries, the United States ranked 37th overall. In fact, research shows that the American health care system, when compared to that of other industrialized countries, falls short in the critical areas of coverage and cost. In this presentation, I will review health care models around the world and assess how our system rates in terms of access to care and its cost effectiveness. To place our comparisons in context, it's beneficial to understand the features of health care of healthcare systems in other countries. There are essentially four basic health care models around the world. I will briefly describe the features of each of these models as it is found in its country of origin. First is the German model, <clears throat> which involves a system of privately operated doctors and hospitals and many private insurance companies. It is funded through premiums paid by patients and their employers to the insurance companies, which in turn pay the providers. Even though there are hundreds of insurance companies, the services, covers, and the fees paid are uniformly regulated between all the payers. Second is the British model, <coughs> which uses primarily public providers and a central government payer. It is funded through taxes and is set up so that the patient never receives a bill. The treatments covered and the fees paid are tightly regulated by the government payer. Third is the Canadian model, which is a combination of the British and German models. Their providers are all private, but the payer is a single government-run insurance program into which every citizen pays monthly premiums. Again, the services covered and fees paid are regulated. Of the more than 220 countries in the world, only 40 of the wealthiest, most industrialized nations actually have a health care system as described by these first three models. The fourth model is essentially the absence of any formal system. It is an often brutal out-of-pocket model in which those who can afford to pay for treatment get help and those who cannot typically stay sick or die. This is the stark reality in rural areas of Africa, Cambodia, and many third world countries. Each of these models should sound familiar to us Americans. Whereas all other countries have one model or another, the American company has all of them. For the majority of working age adults, we are just like Germany. For Native Americans, the military, and veterans, we use the English model. And for the elderly over 65, we operate just like Canada. And for the more than 50 million uninsured adult Americans, we are just like Cambodia or rural Africa. This leads us to our first area of comparison, that of health care coverage. Though we find examples of the first three models within the American health system, we are significantly different from the countries using those models in that we are the only industrialized country that does not provide universal health care for all of its people. We are the only wealthy country that uses the term uninsured. The 2008 National Scorecard produced by the Commonwealth Fund reports that at the end of 2007, over 75 million working age adults in America, more than 42% of that demographic were uninsured or underinsured with little or no access to health care. The result of this phenomenon is reflected in a statistic called avoidable mortality or the number of people who die of curable or treatable diseases because they did not have access to treatment. In a comparison of 19 leading industrial countries, the U.S. ranked 19th in avoidable mortality. We rank poorly in curing curable diseases because while we possess first-class care, tens of millions of our citizens do not have access to treatment due to lack of coverage. In every other wealthy country, these patients would have had ready access to care. Another consequence of the lack of coverage in America is the risk of financial ruin due to medical bills. While bankruptcy due to medical bills is unheard of in any other country with a health care system, the United States reports more than 700,000 cases a year. Our failure to provide universal coverage, as every other wealthy nation does, is a significant factor in America's poor health care rating. There is, of course, one statistic in which the United States clearly ranks number one, and that is spending. Simply put, the United States has spends twice as much on health care per capita than any other nation. There are many contributing factors to America's excessive health care expense, but by far the greatest factor in American health care costs is the complexity and nature of our payment system. All other wealthy countries 
have nonprofit payer systems in which the amount paid is centrally regulated and uniformly administered. In contrast, the vast majority of American payers are for profit with a complex mesh of payment plans and rate schedules. <clears throat> the result is a costly, expansive administrative overhead unique to the American system. Within our for profit model, payers employ teams of underwriters who, and claims adjusters whose primary job is to simply find creative ways to deny payments and maximize profits for shareholders. Likewise, due to the complex mesh of payment schedules, providers must employ teams of coders and billers who submit adjusted claims to potentially hundreds of different payers, all with different rates and rules. These roles simply do not exist within the single model systems. By comparison, the single model countries with standardized coverage and payment schemes enjoy a modest 3 to 5 percent overhead, meaning up to 97 cents of every dollar spent on health care actually goes towards treating the patient. The overly complex American model, on the other hand, is four times more expensive to operate with an administrative overhead greater than 20 percent. Acknowledging this disparity between America's system and that of other countries, the U.S. Government Accountability Office concluded that if the U.S. could get their health care administrative costs down to Canadian levels, the money saved could pay for the health care of all our uninsured Americans. Clearly, when compared to the health care systems of other countries, the United States falls significantly behind in providing adequate coverage for its people within a cost-effective system. We rank dead last among industrial nations in almost every measurable health care statistic. Is it possible for America to reverse directions and earn the right to say we are number one even in health care? I believe it is if we really want to. By following the example of our peer countries, we can decide to provide universal coverage. We can decide to use a consistent non-profit payment scheme that reduces cost. If it becomes important enough to each of us, we can choose to be number one in caring for our people. Are there any questions? Yes. Aren't the uh, healthcare systems used in other countries just socialized medicine? Um, actually, the term socialized medicine is a misnomer and it's misleading. The phrase was coined in 1947 by a marketing company um, hired by the American Medical Association for use in a very effective ad campaign against the national health care model proposed by the Truman administration. The negative connotations of the phrase persist even to today. Ironically, the health care models commonly dismissed as socialized medicine all exist within the American health care system already. That's very interesting. So doesn't the American health care system provide better care than other, other countries, at least for those that have a organized health care system? Um, surprisingly, no. Multiple studies demonstrate that America rates poorly in several quality measures. For example, we rank ninth out of nine of net wealthy countries in survival rates for most common diseases, and we rank 23rd out of 23 in comparisons of infant mortality rates and healthy life expectancy after 60. Uh, 